begin with today uh, to can you continue on 8.1, quick warm up. Okay, write the series and summation notation. And then what is the difference between a sequence and a series? What's a finite series? What's an infinite series? And then write the rule for each sequence. So quick review of yesterday's and to hopefully summarize a bunch of yesterday's stuff. No pun intended there. All right? Uh -huh. Okay. Hey, let's talk about a few different things here. First, um, almost, almost even a bit out of order, I want to talk about the, this question right here. What's the difference between a sequence and a series? Dallas? Good, yeah. Sequence, if we, if we go just kind of in a very generic sense, uh, you're just listing them. You have commas in between. A series, you're adding or subtracting them. Okay? Difference between a sequence and a series. So what's a finite series? Kenzie? Um, anything that ends with a Good, it ends with a number. Which means infinite goes on for forever. So, like, if I'm looking at these, these represent sequences, but this one's a infinite sequence. It keeps going. This one's finite. It ends. How do we know? Well, the little dots. That means it goes on forever. This means it ends. Okay? All right. Now, I know that we're dealing with, I was asking for series there, but same idea. Okay? So, this is a series. This is a sequence. Just to make sure we're clear on that. Now, some guidelines to follow. We try to uh, make sure that we're clear off of yesterday's stuff. First thing I would do, I'd look and try to find out if there's some of the patterns that we've already studied. You've studied a lot of patterns in math. Okay, ones that we've studied this year, linear, quadratic, cubic, exponential. Okay, those are all patterns. We've studied rational log, all that stuff. Okay, those are all different patterns. The basic ones, when we're dealing with expon or excuse me, with a linear, just seeing, we know if something's linear if their first degree or if their first difference is the same. So if I'm looking at this and figuring out my difference, that has a difference of 6, whereas this now has a difference of from 4 to negative 8 is negative 12. This one goes up 24, and this one drops down 48. Okay, obviously the first level is not the same. If we go to the second level, this one drops down 6, or excuse me, 18. This one drops down 36. So the second level doesn't appear to be the same either. Right? Oh, I'm sorry, up 36. Thank you. Okay, and this one then drops down 60, no, 70, 72. Thank you. Okay, and we could try the third level since we have enough numbers here, and that, that would be cubic, but it, this one goes up, whereas this one goes down. So this one's going to be a positive. It's not going to be the same. So if your levels don't tell you it's linear, that would be linear. This would be quadratic. This would be cubic. So if we want to think of linear as x to the first, you could think of it that way as well. Okay, if that doesn't work, the next thing that I would check check is to see if it's a exponential function okay so exponential how do we know if something is exponential yeah yeah if it increases by a common factor in terms of like a common ratio okay so if you're multiplying by the same thing every time so to get from here to here do I multiply by something. Yeah, what is it? Negative 2. Does that work here? Yeah. Does it work here? Yeah, so this is an exponential function. And if something's an exponential function, then it's in the form of y equals a, b, x. Remember, a is our starting or initial value. b is our growth or decay. It's our rate. So 
For some of you, you may think, it's what I'm multiplying by every single time. That's B. So in this case, B is negative 2. So in this problem, we'd have negative 2 to the power of X or to N or whatever. So if I'm thinking of this, yesterday we talked about listing this as N. We're relating N to A sub N. So this was our first term, our second term, our third term, fourth term, and fifth term. So those numbers right there. So if I'm relating this, I know that from here to here, I'm multiplying by negative 2 every time, but it's really not relating that piece. Okay, we've got to somehow relate n to a sub n. So an easier route might be to go, okay, well, I'm going to go now and try to do negative 2 to the power of n. I'm just going to add another line or another row up here. Okay, so adding that other row, since I know the pattern now, negative 2 to the power of n, this would be negative 2 to the first. Negative 2 to the second. I'm just plugging in whatever n is for that n. Negative 2 to the third. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the correct answer, but it gives us a starting point. So now I've used my base. I plugged it in. Let's see, does negative 2 to the first equal negative 2? Yeah. Does negative 2 to the second equal 4? Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Negative 2 to the third, negative 8? Yeah. So it seemed to work here. It won't always work. If it doesn't work from there, then we do another step. I'm trying to give you guidelines. So really, right now, we could say a sub n is equal to, everyone write down your equation for that. What is a sub n equal? Tell your neighbor what you wrote. Negative 2 to the power of n. There we got it. Okay? That is what it equals. Very good. Is that what they asked us to do? Yeah, they asked us to write in summation notation. Now, we still had to do all this. It's just in summation notation, we don't have the a sub n. Right? That's a sequence. Summation notation, we write our cool sigma symbol. We have the rule here, so we keep that. We don't put equals. We have the rule. And we say what term we started with. Term is 1. N and N. So we have to use N here. If you used X here, you'd use X here. If you use K here, you use K there. You can use whatever letter you want. Unless they tell you what letter to use. Okay? And then you have to put what you're going to. What are we going to? We're going to the fifth term. Okay, remind your neighbor how you read that. All right, so let's make sure we're clear. It's the sum. The sum of negative 2 to the power of n for values of n of, excuse me, from values of 1 to 5. Okay? Hopefully you wrote that down yesterday. If not, rewrite it again. The sum of negative 2 to the power of n for values of n from 1 to 5. Okay? Maybe I'll write it again for everyone. Good? Any questions? That was a really quick review, right? Okay? Let's try this next one. Write the sequence. Now, I want you to go through the same steps for number, this first one. Let's do 1, 4, 16, 64, 256, and so, so on. Go through those same steps to try to find your sequence. Is it linear? Is it quadratic? Is it cubic? 
Is it exponential? How many of you just recognized right away it was exponential? You like looked at it and go, hey, I'm, that's multiplying by four every time. So you, you wouldn't have to necessarily try all your, your first row differences, second row differences, if you recognize right away. So I multiply by four every time. Okay, here's n, a sub n. I know that here I'm times in, or multiplying by four each time. So really, if you think of it, this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And what I just asked you to do a minute ago, I'm going to have to write it up here, is to take 4 and put it to the nth power and make another, like another row up there. Now, if you do that, 4 to the nth is 4 to the first. 4 to the nth is 4 to the second. 4 to the third. 4 to the fourth. And 4 to the fifth. Is 4 to the first 1? No, what is it? It's 4. Is 4 to the second 4? No, it's 16. Notice that each one of these happens to start like this is that one. That one is that one. That, that one is that one. Okay, it would really be nice if this was slid back one space. You can't just move the numbers okay but you can change this like if we want this to be we really want this to be a 2 right here we'd like it to be excuse me we'd like it to be a, a 0 right there 4 to the 0 power and we really want this to be 4 to the first power and we really want the other one to be 4 to the second and 4 to the third and 4 to the fourth so what are we doing to this number each time? We're subtracting 1. And that number represents n. So we're taking n and we're subtracting 1. That's what this represents. And that then shifts that bottom row. So this is saying a sub n is equal to 4 to the n minus 1 power. It's nice to have a process when you're dealing with sequences in series because a lot of times, especially when you ask for help, they're like, well, I just kind of know. Like, I can see that pattern. Oh, how'd you get it? I, I just know. Like, I can see that. Okay. You really want to have some steps you're taking. Okay, let's see if we can solidify that a bit over here. Okay, let's do this next one. Go through that same process, too. Okay, was it linear? Quadratic? Exponential? Yes, yeah, multiplying by? Negative 5. Anytime, especially when you have a negative, make sure you put parentheses. Big deal. So a sub n, we go 1, 2, 3, and 4. And if I'm putting my negative 5 in, that's negative 5 to the nth. Okay, I am going to then say this is negative 5 to the first, negative 5 to the second, negative 5 to the third, and negative 5 to the fourth, negative 5 to the first, 25? No, by the way, once again, if you are not putting parentheses around it, it doesn't matter right here, but here it does. If you didn't put parentheses, you're saying 5 squared times negative 1. All your answers are negative. Put parentheses around that 5, or that negative 5. Negative 5 squared, is that 25? No. Okay, it's not negative 125. It is 25. Okay, so this happens to match with this one. This one happens to match with that one, and this one will end up matching with that one. So really, we would want this to move that way. Right? We really want, we know that negative 5, negative 5 to what power is... 25. The second. And negative 5 to what power is 625? Or negative 125, excuse me. Third. And we want the next one to be to the fourth. And we want this one to be to the fifth. So what do we have to do to this number? You have to add one this time. Right? And this number represents n, so this is negative 5 to the n 
plus 1 power. Okay? So a sub n is equal to, once again, parentheses. I don't know if I've said that yet. Okay? Put them around it. Negative 5 to the n plus 1. How many got it? Anyone want to volunteer that they forgot for parentheses? They forgot parentheses. That happens. Okay. Just don't let it happen to you. All right. Hey, I realize that this is a lot of work showing, but I promise you it is well worth your time when you're learning this. Okay. How many of you are clarified a little more? I hope. Okay. I want you to take out, actually, any questions before we go on? You should take out your extra practice that I signed you yesterday, please. All right, go ahead and compare your answers for that extra practice. Page 220 of your student journal. All righty. Wrap it up next minute, please. Okay. Can I have your attention back up here? We're going to get through this real quick so we can start up on our assignment. But here's, well, any questions on one and two to begin with? All right. So number one and two. Hopefully that's what you got. Just continuing out the pattern there. Notice, notice some, um, just some notations and making sure you're using the correct format. Since you're using n, you have n up here and a sub n. This is f of n, so you have f of n down here. Okay. All right. Just so you know. All right. Okay. Questions there? All right. Any questions on three and four? Why don't I put up the answers? We'll look at them, okay? Number three. It says describe the pattern. All right, write the next term and write the rule. Well, what I like to think to myself first, kind of what I went through with you today, if it's arithmetic, geometric, or exponential. Arithmetic, by the way, is, is where you're adding. Geometric, if you remember, is where you're multiplying. That's like our... Um, Exponential or exponent, yeah, and then I put exponential here. I should have put quadratic, okay, but linear, quadratic, or exponential. But it actually said describe the pattern. Well, in this pattern, we're adding two to the previous term, okay. A sub 5 is equal to 5, that's our fifth term, we just continued out, and it's arithmetic. Okay, you don't have to have arithmetic. If you just said you're adding 2, that's fine. a sub n is equal to 2n minus 5. Yeah. 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 If you, well, you mean in your description? Yeah. No, you want to say you're adding 2 to the previous term. Okay. Because, yeah, you guys, when you're doing your description, say you're adding two to the previous term or the next consecutive two or term is two more than the previous is a good way of saying it as well. Yeah, Roy? Yeah. Just quadratic, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't want you to get hung up on this. This was just, yeah, you, this is not part of the answer. It's just it really is what we went through today at the beginning of the class. So let's ignore that part. That's confusing us. Okay, on this one, the pattern is we're adding two-fifths, so the next consecutive term is two-fifths more than the previous. That's probably a good way of writing that. The next consecutive term
know it's kind of wordy, but that's really what's happening there. Okay? So a sub 5, the next term would be 2. Don't worry about the arithmetic. You don't have to have that. Okay? And a sub n is equal to 2 fifths n. We'll just put that. We'll input that right there. Hopefully that makes a little more sense. Okay. Number 5. Number five, write the series in sigma notation or summation notation. Remember, this is our this this right here is called your upper limit. If you don't have these, these are in your student journal. It's what I'm going to cover with you right after this. Just making sure we have some of the vocab down. That's called your upper limit. This is your lower limit. In fact, this n, if we use n or whatever letter there, is called your index. Just in case it's referenced and you're, you need the definition. All that's in your student journal on the previous page. But uh, this is the expression or the rule you're trying to change here. Okay, so this rule, this is kind of a tougher one. Okay, it's quadratic, right? With the exception that the negative symbol. So if you kind of look at what I have here, I have I rather than N, I used I. So I is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A sub I is negative 1, negative 4, 4. So all this pattern here. I squared is 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Well, I need some of those to be negative. If I go negative I, okay, if I go negative 1 to the power of I so that I switch every time, that means negative 1 to the first power is negative 1. Negative 1 to the second power is positive one. Negative one to the third power is negative one. So this right here, if you ever get to a pattern, you're like, I can't make the signs match up, try to take negative one and raise it to that, to the power of i or the power of n. Because what happens is every even power, it switches to positive. And then you can multiply these two things together. So you're taking i squared and multiplying it by negative one to the power of you're going to infinity because the dot, dot, dot. Okay, this piece right here, this appears, this appears sometimes. And when you're having a hard time figuring out how to make your signs match up, that's a good piece to use. Okay, so make a good note to yourself on it. Anyone get it? Good. Was it tough? A little frustrating. How many of you got the I squared part? You're like, I can get the, I can get the numbers to match. I just can't get the the the, the signs to match. Good. All right. It's supposed to be a little challenging. That's why I put a time limit on your assignment. When I say a half hour, I seriously mean a half hour. I don't mean, well, he said a half hour. Does he really mean it? Okay. And then you spend like three hours on it because you can't get the signs to match up. You go to bed and you wake up in the middle of the night thinking about it. Sorry if I just told you about your evening. All right. Okay. How many got the next two? All right. Let's see how you did. Find the sum. Number six. You had to take that pattern and apply it for when n is two. This is your starting point up to five. So you calculate it out and then you add them up. 73 twelfths. How many got that? Okay, how many of you started at 2? Anyone start at 1? Yeah, I forget we started at 1. Okay, we've, we started them all at 1, right? And then on your assignment, I throw in this one that starts at 2. This was to get you to think a bit. The next one was way tough, dude. Like, if you did this, you're like, oh, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are only four things I have to add up. The next one, you start at 1, and you go to... 18. Like 18 things I got to add up. That is ridiculous. Notice I didn't even write them all out. It would be nice if they would like give you a formula for that. It's ridiculous. In fact, if you if you would look at the previous page, page 219, there is a formula right here. I know. Can you believe that? They have some formulas for special cases. So on number on that problem, it's i squared is our rule. Notice 
here, you look at that problem, there's that I squared. The formula actually says, look, if I take, if I take whatever my limit was, so the problem on number 7 was 18, and I is equal to 1, and this is I squared. I can plug all these things in, okay? I would take whatever I is, so in this case it would be whatever N is, so 18. I don't, I've got to use N here. It drives me nuts using the I. Sorry. Frustrates me. All right. So I'd have 18 times 18 plus 1 times 2 times 18 plus 1. Notice I'm just putting 18 in, my upper limit, for all the ends. So it would be 18 times 17, and this quantity is 36, 37, all over 6, which would be a lot faster than like adding them all up by hand. Right? Oh, 19, yes. Good job. Let's well, check it. Does that equal the answer I gave you? 2,109? I hope so, otherwise we've got some issues. here. Okay, how many of you got 2,109 last night? How many did it all by hand? How many spent more than a half hour? Did anyone look up the formula? Did anyone have help from a friend or a family member? Wow. How'd you guys figure it out? Yeah. Oh, you, you found a cool key on your calculator? Oh. Some people found a cool key on their calculator. All right. Some people cheated. All right. Okay. Use their resources. All right. Any questions? Hey, you guys. Hey, let's look at these other things just really quick, and then I need to get you going on your assignment. Okay? Number, the sum of uh, n terms of a series when n is 1. Notice if this, this is kind of a weird one. Notice the rule is just 1. That would mean if I said, if, if this problem, for instance, if I gave me a, someone give me a value for n. Okay. So n starts at 1, and this is 7. That means... Seven times I am going to have the rule of one, and I'm going to add it. Seven times. What's my answer going to be? Seven. Yeah, it's going to be seven, right? I'm glad you guys didn't say like 50. That was your chance of getting me back for that problem. Okay, it's seven. That's your answer. That's why this says, hey, if there's n terms and the rule is one, you just it's just whatever n is. If it's three million, then it's, your answer is three million because you're adding one three million times. Okay? That'd be a lot of ones. All right? The sum of the first n positive integers is just i. Okay? Here's your rule for it. You're taking whatever n is, you're adding the next number, and then cutting them all in half. Okay? So if I said I want all of the sums from 1, I want you to add up all numbers from 1 to 100 and give me the sum. All you do is add those two things, or add n times n, or n times n plus 1, and divide it by 2. The sum of the first n positive integers. So you take whatever n is, 100, right? In this case, that would be 100. You would add 101 to it, and you divide by 2. Or you multiply 101 by it and divide by 2. Okay, So n times n plus 1. And then this one we just did. All right. Hey, there's also a bunch of information about um, some of the terms we've talked about on there. And the previous page, I'm kind of working backwards, goes through the sequencing and everything we've done. And hopefully you know what all those terms mean now. That's page 218 of your student journal.